Hello and welcome to Your Business, Your Wealth. My name is Paul Adams and I can't wait for you guys to hear what we have in store for you today. We are going to untangle the alphabet soup of Medicare. Now, for some of you listening to this, you may uh, be a long way from collecting Medicare. Uh, for some of you listening to this, you might be right around the corner. This is an episode that would be valuable to almost anybody especially those people you know who are nearing retirement needing to figure this out. In fact, I spoke to a longtime former colleague who, when I told him we we're about to record this with an expert on Medicare, he said, oh my gosh, I can't wait for that episode to release. I'm right at the age I need that. And there is somebody you know who has that concern right now. And you'll see as David and Corey talk about this, that they're gonna cover some of the things that you don't normally think about. And when you've been in a corporate role for so many years or running your own business, you've probably had it all handled by group health insurance coverage and now you're moving into this strange new market. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Corey Shepard and David Preston to give you guys the key to untangling the alphabet soup. Thank you, Paul. Uh, that's a wonderful introduction. It, it was the first to not have uh some kind of comment about me to decipher or <laughs> laugh about it wasn't an interactive introduction like we normally have. David, it's been a while. Great to great to see you. Great to have you on your business, your wealth. How's your Thank summer you. going so far? Doing not, a lot of ski, not a lot of ski patrol happening right now, no. is there? Oh, no <laughs> snow in the mountains out here, but there's a lot of rain and cold in the it's northwest. Summer still hasn't come yet, really. Right. Well, and you know that was just a little bit of a background on you. Uh, I know you've you've done some, you know, high intensity winter sports and teaching people about uh, life and death matters on the mountains, and then you help people take care of life and death matters in other parts of their their lives. So, just for folks who don't know you as well as as we do, uh, give folks a sense of your experience in in this world called health insurance. No, oh, you don't want me to talk about skiing. You can talk about skiing too. <laughs> uh, that's why I got into the insurance business. So I'd have the flexibility and be able to take some time off so I could ski. I like it. So nice. Um, nice. Regarding, insurance, regarding insurance and everything, um, it's a big wild world out there. You guys deal with certain parts of it. I deal with different parts of it. Uh, today, the Medicare discussion. I do miss that you guys didn't banter back and forth in the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> Yeah, David's also a listener, but yeah. So how long have you had a practice in, in insurance? I think, um, you were probably diapers when I if, started. If alive so, at all. Yeah. I didn't want to go that far back, but yeah, <laughs> you're probably accurate there. So got into it, uh, quite a while ago. Um, and it started off with life and disability and then transitioned in the, in the nineties over to medical, never wanted to do medical and Medicare and kind of fell into it and, uh, stay with a lot of contacts, the community I'm in north of Seattle. Um, uh, it's been very lucrative and been fun to help people because it's a lot of confusion. And the more the government gets involved, the more, uh, help people need. And you're, and I know like I've referred individuals to you to help go through the state exchange. Cause even, you know, even though you can go on a state website by yourself, you can also get the help of someone who knows what they're doing and it doesn't change the experience of the individual and their coverage, you know, as far as health insurance, but you also do groups as well. I think businesses, how many employees, what's your, what's your sweet right. spot? Right. So sweet spot on the small group medical is under 20 lives. We've got okay. them bigger than that. And I've got a team of people that do the over 50 and over 100. And then we spend a lot of time on the individual Medicare and, and individual exchange. And interestingly, and some people may not know this, if in our state, if you work on the exchange on an individual basis, you're, you're paying basically in that premium is paid for a broker. So whether you use a broker or don't use a broker, price <laughs> it's is already in there. <laughs> it's already there. Yeah. That's great. So why not? Why not get that, get that help? Well, David, let's give people a sense of what it's like to, to get some of that help from, from you. You know, Paul mentioned the alphabet soup and i think basically everyone listening today knows that these letters exist around medicare different parts a b c and d can you give everyone a a brief intro like high level what each of those parts means yeah so start with a because that's the first one 
and uh, A is Medicare. Uh, Medicare Part A covers uh, hospitals and facilities. And I think, wait for me, I need to, I need a way to remember things. So A is like sure. the shape of, of a um, a building or an A frame, a building. So A covers facilities like hospitals. B Part B covers the providers or a body. You have a body helping you, and that's Medicare Part B. Medicare Part A doesn't cost anything as far as premium. Part B does cost something, and we have a slide we'll show in a little bit because there's a sliding scale based how much you'll pay 170 or more based on your income. And I know you guys have some people that are going to pay a lot more than 170 for their Medicare Part B. So right. that's something we need to consider when we're looking at options about staying on a group plan, coming on a Medicare plan, because sometimes it's cheaper to stay on the group plan. So we need to look so at those well we're definitely going to get back to to that. So just to help some folks relate to it, like right now, everyone who's working for a company has group insurance or bought their own health insurance on the exchange. That is A and B together, essentially, because that's hospitals and their their doctor. But when you go to Medicare, that's splitting into two pieces that they've got to think about separately. And when, when I say A and B, to me, it's instantly it's an over 65 or a Medicare only issue. Correct. Yeah, you it to Correct. what you're saying, yeah. But for all those people who are right on the edge of changing, like their life's going to change a little bit and how they have to, to think okay. about it. So A and B and then C and D. Tell us, tell me about those and then we'll talk about how they all fit together. So I'm going to jump to D. D came in in the early 2000s with the HSA program. That's the drug program. So that's pretty easy to remember okay. what the, the D is D, for. Yeah. I don't have a good acronym for the C one, but that's the Medicare Advantage one. So maybe that's the one you see on TV. Uh, nice. <laughs> a lot of ads, that's Medicare Advantage. The older style plans are Medicare Supplements or Medigap plans. Those are the ones that have been around for a while that have their own alphabet soup, go from A through K or N, I guess it is. And often people would get a, a plan G or a plan F, Medicare Supplement. And then they didn't have drug coverage with those. So then the drug coverage uh, plan D came out in the early 2000s. And then just a few years ago, the Medicare Advantage plans came out that are all inclusive. And that's really a, a tighter partnership between the federal government and private insurance companies. But it really works different. And there's pluses and minuses to each. Gotcha. So folks, so it sounds like folks would never have A, B, C, and D all at once, right? The C kind of replaces the other three if you go in that direction? Good good comment. Um, in order to get the supplement plans, Medigaps, or a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to have A and B. Gotcha. There's so you have to have them, and then that tax on top. You can't just yeah. buy a C. There are some exceptions. To, there, almost everything I say, there's going to be bullet or uh, asterisks and exceptions to weird right. things. We're from the government. We're here to help kind of rules. <laughs> And uh, you know, it could be a one page guide. It's a, it's a many page guide. So we've got um, the Part D is included in Medicare Advantage, most of the Medicare Advantage plans. But if you're getting a okay. Medicare supplement, the more traditional plan, you'd have to go get your own Part D plan as a separate. Gotcha. So thinking about this coming, I know I'm going to have to enroll in Medicare. When do, when do I actually have to enroll or Maybe there's two questions. When do I actually have to? And maybe is there a time I actually want to if that's earlier? Like, what's the strategy for getting into this system when it's coming down the down the road at you? Good question. Um, age 60 is probably too young to start thinking about it. Um, cause, like I had a, a, a person call yesterday and they're getting flooded with mail. I said, oh, you're about 64 and a half. He says, yeah, I am. So six months before you turn 65, the mailbox just starts getting stuffed. Yeah. And there is, there is one piece that's worth keeping. I don't have a screenshot of it. It's called Medicare and me, Medicare and you. That is a guide worth looking at. Uh, but all the rest of the stuff they send you, stuff it off to the side. It is time to start looking at. You've got a three-month window before the month of your birthday. So if your birthday is this month, you had three months prior to sign up for age 65, and you have three months after to sign up for 65. So there's okay, some time. So Six-month window to sign window. up. They, thank you. That was great. Um, that was fast. <laughs> that's the guide okay. there. Man, that was amazing. <laughs> so that that one is worth reading because that's generic. So we've got. We'll have that link in the show for anyone who can't see. Yeah. Well, perfect. Uh, so okay. what happens if you don't 
enroll inside of that six month window. Do we have any penalties? Any any problems? So the pad answer is it depends on your situation. Because if you're on a group <laughs> plan, I've got clients that are in their late seventies on a group medical plan. They don't have any part A or part they don't have any Medicare. Or they may have had a Medicare Part A card sent to them. So a lot of and depends. And when you say depends at this age, sometimes people are thinking of something else, but we'll just stick to there's a lot right. of options. <laughs> okay. So we've, got, we've got the um, pen, there are penalties. There could be penalties for not getting on a drug plan or not getting on a Medicare Part B plan. However, the exception will be if you're on a group plan, you, you don't have the penalties. There won't be any. So, and sometimes the penalties for the drug plans are so small. People are like, I don't care. I'll get I'll get a drug plan when I need one, and I'll, I'll just pay the penalty. The Part B penalty, yeah. yeah, Part B penalties a little bit more. So when you qualify, you should get on a Part B plan most of the time. So, but if someone is because people are work, <clears throat> working or in longer, and you know, you know us, you've been listening to our podcast and talking to us for years bef before that. We're not so, you know, a lot of our clients are not so much thinking, okay, I'm going to hit 65 and quote unquote retire. We don't even like to use that word. We talk about financial independence. So some folks may keep working at least maybe if not as much as before working in a job that is full-time enough that they have some benefits past 65 for a lot of different reasons. So where do you see folks? staying on there do most folks who still have a group plan does it make more sense to just stay on the group coverage or can medicare like i'm sure it depends but what are some things that folks need to look at to think about that decision you train well uh yeah <laughs> so if, if you're on a group plan and you're not paying the premium your employer is why would you come off of that plan yeah, yeah they may not pay for your spouse and or kids if you have kids on the plan because of course we can't be an adult now till we're 27. You <laughs> you're 26 so right. adult doesn't start till later but uh some employer groups don't pay for the spouse so the sp spouse depending on their age may want to peel off or look at individual or social uh, medicare plans so again a lot of variables there so if you're on your own uh self-employed just you but you want to keep doing business it probably is best to get on a medicare plan at age 65. okay yeah. Just yet yeah, versus paying for yourself on the ex on the exchange, so so um, I guess after, to, re to what's after that? After sixty five, yeah, you're not going to get on the exchange. If you stay on you the, if you're on the yeah. prior, sometimes you can stay on, but you can't get tax credits if you're on there. Got it. Wow. So, are there? Have you seen any examples where folks are on a group plan where it might make more sense to yeah. go on a Medicare? plan like there's some big exceptions to watch out for that's a great softball question not so much an exception but if we've got a small group plan with five or six employees and you got a bunch of people in their young 40s and one person that's 65 they're pulling the average age up on that group so mm. if we can remove that person from the group plan it can drop the premiums enough to where that employer could we call it a wink and a nod offer that um employee will, will cover some of your stuff. So if they've got to pay $170 for their Medicare Part B and a Medicare plan, uh, often it's more lucrative for the business owner to do that than to keep that person on a group plan. Now, what if so it's the business owner themselves? Because we have a lot of business owners listening. Let's say they're 65. They've got a business that's running great. The employers are, are running it. They've got no reason to retire or sell it. Can they take themselves off of the plan that they're sponsoring on the Medicare, if they're the one pulling up the average? Yes, they can do that. The reality is, and, and that another great question uh, or thought there, all of my employers that are in that category now, they're working hard. They really, they I call it, they've got their widget hat on. They're just doing widgets. They're making widgets. They're doing their business and they don't want to change because this in, involves change. <laughs> right. And often the right. spouse doesn't want to change. Um, it could be both ways. It could be husband or wife. Doesn't matter. But they don't want to make. Two people often have to change, so there's a disruption there. And usually they're like, "No, just keep it the same." Unless we've got that older owner with a bunch of young people, and it's a huge financial difference, and they're healthy, so they can see, "I'm fine. I don't need anything. I'll just shift that, to a medication." You know, they may not want it, right? I mean, it could be. 
expensive to keep going as is if they're if they're the one older employee pulling up that yes. that average like the benefits that they're providing every other employee could be a lot a lot more so uh there's something else that you mentioned about part b that i think is really important to to talk about and it's a thing that we've talked to our clients about who are hitting 65 is these variable rates for that for that based on your on your income can you talk a little bit about if you can see starts out at $170 on the right hand side based on income that you're seeing on the left. Can you see that? Okay, Corey. Yeah. And go. it's, and the part that I always love to point out to folks is it's looking at your last two years yeah. of, of income. Yeah. So you're going to almost always pay more the first couple years than you will long term if, if you're retiring to say lower, lower income, like you're, you're going to start higher, but this is one that, <laughs> well, what is your experience? Like when you're explaining this to folks, how do they feel about, <laughs> about these different it's tiers? Not a lot of, a lot of the calls I get, uh, not a lot of them are in the higher tiers. They're in the lower two tiers, gotcha. but I've got, I do have one dentist. He's 69. He started a new practice four years ago and he's going gangbusters. He's up in the highest realm there. So that's why he stayed on his group plan because he's like, well, I'm going to have to pay over $600 a month or what is it? That number is five, six. I can't see it. Um, the, the lower right number. And the add that to his Medicare part B part and a supplement plan. And he was up there quite a bit. So he said, I'll just stay on the group plan. I know how that works. So. You know, we, where we've also found this interacting with other parts of the planning on someone's balance sheet is say clients who are 65 have a lot of their assets in IRAs, pre-tax accounts, and yeah. they're facing a pretty high required minimum distribution at age 70. So we're starting Roth conversions to move money across at a lower tax bracket. So they're not getting bumped too much in there at 72. But then they, but then we look at Medicare and we, we have to do this calculation of, well, if yeah. you do too much, it'll pop up your your Medicare, but by how much and what's the break even? And yes, you're going to pay a little bit more in Medicare, but is it still worth it because of the net cost in the end, the net savings? So there's all kinds of it depends and it's a fun, <laughs> you know, the government here, we're here to help and we add this extra <laughs> complexity. It's a, it's a thing worth looking into. Yeah. It's job so, security for me. <laughs> right, for you, for you. It's sad, but yeah, it should be way more simple. So, uh, so we talked about penalties uh, a little bit. Uh, let's see. Okay, you mentioned Medicare Advantage uh, as seen on TV. See for <laughs> see it on TV. So uh, are these? I mean, in my experience, almost everything I see advertised on daytime TV is like really high quality, no loopholes, like kind of the best of the. <laughs> Not really. Daytime TV. Is that between the soap <laughs> opera commercials. I mean, it was like in the nineties, but you know, yeah, it's been a little <laughs> while. So, uh, yeah, what's, how should folks filter or think about these ads and, and what are they, what should they pay attention to when they're seeing what's these on TV? Said, I think kind of what's not being said, cause each, if it's, I won't say any company names, but you, you know, the big ones and they're on those ads <laughs> and they got a famous person off and helping them and they're the best one there is. And they have a previous. Them. A previously famous person. It's someone who was well, famous 20, you don't 30 know. years ago. <laughs> you don't know. Right. Joe yeah. Namath or something. Right. So, so they uh, are, are just touting their plan. And, and they're, probably what they're saying is correct, but there's other things they're not saying. Like that plan doesn't do some other things. The, the key difference there is you're just seeing Medicare Advantage plans and you'll start seeing... Open enrollment's October 7th for Medicare. So you're going to see a flurry in September. They'll start up in September after Labor Day. It'll okay. be start crushing those ads, make you aware. And that'll go all the way through even into the new year because there's an extra open enrollment after the first year. It's like the definition of open enrollments will boggle your mind. So <laughs> um, you've got the uh, famous people doing that, talking about it. The, the attractive thing to the Medicare Advantage plans is many of them have a zero premium program to be on. I put my father-in-law in one with a big carrier that doesn't advertise much on TV, but it's been a great plan for him. Claims have been covered great. Doctor Network's really decent. But in general, they're newer plans and they networks tend to be smaller 
that if you just go the old fashioned Medicare supplement, Medigap plan, it's any doctor in the United States, as long as they're contract with Medicare, they got to see you. So it's real simple. There's not even a doctor list. And you're going to pay a premium on those anywhere from 50 to $200 a month. And they're less okay. out of pocket for the older style plan. So if you got some big claims, your out of pocket costs are going to be less. The newer plans are really attractive. They throw in little things like hearing benefits and dental benefits and some things like that. So they're very attractive. A lot of sizzle. When the smoke settles, you want to, if you got a $400,000 <laughs> cancer claim, how's it getting paid? And how much do you have to cough up for the thing? So that's where it can be tough because you might be limited on how many doctors you can see or not be able to see a doctor you want to see. So a little bit more limiting there and so a little bit more in the pocket. It's a little bit more like these high deductible health insurance plans that folks can be on now. Like if you're, you kind of got to guess at utilization to kind of think about how you're going to do, but how do they get away with zero? Well, the way they get away with zero premium is a lot of restrictions. Like it's got to come from somewhere. It, you're being so skeptical. No, not quite that bad, but I, <laughs> okay. it's a good thought. So that's why the marketing, they are, so the federal government's giving them a dollar, a chunk of money. Then the insurance companies, they say, go do your stuff. And you got to have some basic things covered and all that, but they're marketing hard. So they're bringing in the new, the new people. And the, okay. one of the big rules about Medicare is you got to call them. You like for clients, if you give me a lead to somebody in Medicare, they're supposed to call me. And a new rule coming up, this is important to note. So there's some rules on the on the docket now that it looks like for 2023, I'm going to have to record every conversation and keep wow. that recording for 10 years. So some guys are going, I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. Which will, which will accelerate possibly the failure of this, which there's some people in D.C. that want that because they want the Fed to take it all over. Over 65 and under 65, 100% insurance for everybody not that everything can be covered well but that's a whole other story which is a whole other conversation that we don't <laughs> don't have time for yeah, that's so a lot of the background of dc so if someone if if someone listening gets a call marketing call from someone trying to sell them a advantage plan then that person is already breaking the law it's kind of like it's a chicago at o'hare airport there's signs that say anyone asking if you need a ride shouldn't be giving you one right like you can't solicit in the airport for tech like you got to go walk up to the taxi and ask for the ride same thing here so if someone's giving you that call you already know they're willing to operate outside of the law in certain ways and you may want to be very suspicious that's a, of that's a really good point yeah that's why in those ads you see the the number the 1-800 number being flashed right. and repeated, repeated repeated yeah and stuff like that um also what we do is just called a um, um, scope of appointment. So we actually have them sign, and this has been going on for a while. They sign a form that says what we're going to talk about. So we just have them check all the boxes so we can talk about any kind of Medicare. But it's one of the things we got to regulation we got to do. It's a pain in the rear, and it's it's predicate or it's it has happened because of so many abuses and misuses sure. to seniors by these marketing sure. arms and call centers where there'll be tons and tons of people calling in a, in a room, you know, a boiler room, so to speak, right. for guys like us that are doing a much broader brush. And we're usually just taking introductions from folks like you or our clients are aging into Medicare. We're not out there pumping Medicare 20, uh, 365 days a year. They trickle in. So right. a big difference between the marketing organizations. Big and, difference. Yeah. 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 Well, we're running, we're, we're running short on, on time. This has been just a fire hose for people to, to, to drink from, uh, what are, what have we not hit on? What if, what, what have I not asked about? What, are, what do you want people to know? What you, your own father-in-law that you mentioned, what do you want him to know before going into Medicare that we haven't hit yet? I, I think a couple things would be, it's time you have to step up to the plate and start understanding some of this stuff. You don't have to be an expert at all, but then have, find somebody to call in your area, in your state. I've got, I'm, I'm Washington state. I've got some guys that work in other states. But whatever state you're in, get someone that you can contact. If you don't have a contact in a state, I can throw my national association. I can help people out with that. But sure. it's good to have a conversation with a human being that's not at a call center. That's actually yeah. going to be doing this year round. You know, not not every day of the year kind of thing. But uh, 
just uh, these call centers are just temporary. So I'd say right. be willing to step up and get educated and then get on a plan. Um, I think one, yeah, there, there's so many details. I don't want to get into all the details, but um, <laughs> you want to, if there's going to be change. So don't be afraid of the change. Embrace the change and, and lean into it and uh, just accept that and go with the best thing. I guess one thing would be you can make changes every year. So if you get into something right now, like I've got somebody aging in September 1st, we'll start with a plan. Right. If they don't like it, they can change for January 1st of next year. So there's some that's flexibility. Great. Yeah, so it's not, that's important to think about. It's not one election for the rest of your your life right. post 65. You've that's got the why opportunity. we have a lot of on TV too. Right, right. <laughs> that's great. Well, David, thank you for taking the time to come on and, and hang out with us for a while. Paul, do you have any last questions or thoughts to take us out? Not at all. This was phenomenal. I'm so glad, David, you were able to come and be able to bring this expertise. We know people end up with a lot of questions. And again, guys, this an episode like this is a good reason to subscribe, to comment below. <clears throat> it really makes a difference for the people that aren't gonna get a chance to see this otherwise. People you will have never known may never know and will never meet might get a chance to trip over a key piece of information that will change their financial life going forward and david i think you certainly delivered on that today and from all of us here at sound financial group we hope that this episode has been a contribution to you being able to design and build a good life